Nigeria's lockdown in some states stemming from the rise in COVID-19 cases would alter the country's energy consumption pattern. The lockdown is also expected to further burden an already dilapidated power supply system. The crisis is underscored by energy demand, which significantly exceeds supply. I am now joined by Martin Zarogi, Associate Director, Energy and Natural Resources Group at KPMG. Good afternoon to you, Martins, and thank you for joining us. Hi, good afternoon. What has been the impact of... You're welcome. What has been the impact of COVID-19 on the power sector so far? Oh, it's, it's been very interesting. Um, I'm sure a number of people would, would expect that, given that it is an essential service, um, that the sector will, may not have suffered as much impact as um, other non-essential services where people have had to stop working. But that is not totally correct. There's been a number of significant impacts that the sector is already facing as a result of um, COVID-19. One of which is um, um, a reduction in revenue. As you would expect, a number of industrial concerns have had to stop operations because of the um, lockdown. And these are guys that typically would pay um, a higher tariff than residential customers. So um, our expectation is that given that most of the power being supplied at this point would basically be moved to residential customers, it would have an impact on revenue um, for companies that are already, in a sense, struggling. Um, there is also the issue of um, cash, which is king, and which is very key for the sector as it is right now. Um, what you will find is one of the issues the sector has typically had is a significant collection losses. Those losses are a lot more um, for residential customers than what you typically would have for industrial customers. So as you expect that the number of uh, uh, majority of power that is being supplied at this period begins to gravitate towards residential customers, it obviously would have an impact on collection losses and the amount of cash that will be available for the same amount of power that is being supplied. Um, another issue that we've also, that they would also be grappling with at this particular point in time is the impact of, of all of these on the minor tariff review that was due to come into effect in April. Um, we understand that NEC at this point is looking to move the commencement of that um, review to June, which is two months later than when, when was previously planned. And that is also under the assumption that will be out of all of this within the shortest possible time, which, as we can rightly confirm, no one, no one knows when we'll be truly out of this. And, and it's not just the review or when the review comes in. There are also issues around the uh, macroeconomic assumptions that went into arriving at the new um, or the proposed new tariff, um, because those, those, those assumptions would basically be, be shaken by some of these, these uh, issues we've seen around COVID-19. One is the exchange rates. Even, that, even before COVID-19, a number of players were already very skeptical as to whether the assumptions were, in a sense, realistic. Um, NEC had applied an exchange rate of 300, 309 um, to the dollar, um, even though many people had said at that time that the um, players, the discos, would generally only be able to assess the market at about 369, 360 naira to the dollar as All opposed right. to 309. Martins, Today, yeah. let, let's bring this home a little to, bit. Sorry, to, let me interject a yes. bit here. Let's bring this home a little bit. How can we increase electricity access during these tough times to ensure it is accessible at the, at the necessary level, particularly during this lockdown? Um, I, I don't think it's, a, it's an issue that can be resolved in the short term, especially during the lockdown. The key issue with access is infrastructure. And it will be very difficult to ramp up infrastructure within a very short time, talk less of within a period where um, people are, are more or less stuck at home. So I, I'm not sure that, that we can look at access with a short-term prism. But is there we'll a possibility, have to look at it for is, is there possibility longer term Martins, is there a possibility during this lockdown that we have, you know, I mean, unlimited supply and access to, to power supply? Is, is there a possibility this can be done? Yes, this is one thing that we can continue to do, um, but also it also depends on the availability of these meters um, and whether they are available to be deployed to customer locations. Um, because if they are not available, like I said, the number of industrial concerns are currently shut down. The distribution companies and the generating companies don't manufacture meters. Um, you have independent meter asset providers that do this, and if they don't have access to raw materials, 
access to facilities to be able to manufacture and deploy the meters, then we may not be able to achieve more, too much progress during the lockdown. Now, you want to run us through the interventionist fund, um, funding which the government has provided from time to time. Just run us through that interventionist fund from the government. Okay. Um, the government has had to step in into the sector, and, 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 and the reasons haven't been far-fetched. Even though a number of people have questioned why government has repeatedly um, put in some form of funding into a sector that has been privatized. But when you look at the fact that tariffs today are not cost-reflective, somebody would have to bear the brunt for the difference. So yes, the government has had to repeatedly step in to cover the shortfall between uh, what the discos collect and what is due to um, the generating companies and the transmission companies um, just to ensure that the sector continues to survive until, until such a point where the sector becomes um, sustainable on its own. That would continue to happen, unfortunately, until we get to a point where we arrive at cost-reflective tariffs. Now, according to NEC, uh, the timeline for that was initially set for the end of 2021, but that was before COVID-19. It is very, very um, realistic to expect that that timeline may, may shift a bit and government may still need to continue to support the sector through intervention funds until that time. Between, between the discos and the transmission company, in complementary government effort at this point of COVID-19, what, what, what way or palliative do you think they can provide to its consumers? Quickly, please. Okay. Uh, at the end of the day, we need to understand that the discos are privately owned companies set up to, uh, set up to run and make money for its shareholders. Um, I think that palliatives at this point would have to very um, immensely um, involve governments. If you expect now there's been talk around free electricity for, for two months and all of that, but somebody would have to take on that responsibility of bearing that cost. And I don't think it is fair to expect that the discos, given that they would have significant fixed costs already invested into providing power for that time to take on that responsibility on their own. So government will need to step in and come to an agreement as to how to cover the cost of those of those this kind of palliatives during this period. Mr. Martins Aroge, thank you very much for joining us and for your contribution. Thank you for having me.